Hey, there we go. Server side development and rock and roll. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My turn to talk now. Okay. Time for software. Can you hear me? I'm gonna start. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Gil. I'm uh, working at uh, the research team at Adians. And here I'll be presenting an introductory talk to deep learning. Uh, I'm sure that everybody here heard about uh, deep learning, but uh, I really wanted to give like a more in-depth view, and the ultimate goal is that everyone who wants to uh, can go back home and implement uh, sort of uh, the algorithms presented here, just download something and, and implement it uh, by itself. Okay, so uh, also I haven't said it, but uh, I'll be focusing more on computer vision and less on uh, text and voice. It's because uh, that's um, presenting uh, examples with computer vision is much, much easier. Okay, so let's show a quick demo. Uh, okay, uh, I guess uh, some of you remember the big hype on the Microsoft How Old tool. Uh, so I actually uh, have two papers on age and gender uh, classification and emotion classifications. So I wanted to, to demonstrate uh, how it works. Uh, so, without further ado, I'll be loading the networks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's present an image. It's a good friend of mine. Uh, now, let's apply face detection, get the faces. And using our amazing deep learning technology, we can predict his age to be uh, 38, till, uh, 38 uh, uh, until uh, 43. He's actually 31 years old. <laughs> he's male, and as you can see, he's smiling, so he's happy. And yeah, now let's take another example. So I can play with this all day. And let's take a picture of myself. And second, yeah, I don't remember what. What's this one? No, let's take a funnier pic. See my hair. Okay. So again, apply face detection. Get the face uh, region. <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment, though. Uh, male and again, the emotion should work. I think. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so that's it. And actually, that's a project that uh, it was very, very easy. Uh, to produce, so I hope that if any one of you wants, you can try and download the code and uh, do it by itself. Can you share okay. this iPython? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I have actually I have an example in my, in the project page, uh, and yeah, sure, I'll be glad to. Okay, so what is deep learning? Um, deep learning is the state of the art approach in almost every computer vision task. Um, it's also state of art in almost every NLP and voice recognition task. And it's widely used in the industry. Uh, Google now produced the Google, they published the Google API. Face.com, which is Israeli startup that was purchased by Microsoft. Uh, really, the, the leap was uh, to leverage deep learning techniques. Real Face is an Israeli startup. We do it in, in audience. Uh, just visual, uh, previously named Superficial uh, Trucks, a lot of other companies. Yeah, but what is deep learning? I haven't said anything that you guys don't already know. So basically, deep learning is just a synonym for multi-layer uh, neural networks. And neural networks is uh, basically a pretty old uh, machine learning model. It was inspired by, by the brain, but actually doesn't even come close to the complexity of the brain. Uh, so basically, if you stack uh, a lot of layers in, in a neural network, that thing is suddenly called deep learning. And actually, it's been around for uh, quite a time. I hope that this video would, would work. Uh, OK. You can see a demo from 93. Uh, this is Jan Kuhn. He's now the AI director at, uh, at uh, Facebook. 
and he's presenting his early work, uh, Lanet, that does uh, digit recognition using a uh, convolutional neural net. Okay, so this is again, I think, either from 93 or 98, or even, uh, uh, even previous uh, approaches, uh, far, far back as the 80s. Okay, so this is really cool. See, it actually works. Okay, that's enough from that. Oh no, sorry. Good. So if it's been around for 20 years, what's the big hype all of a sudden? So let's look at the ImageNet challenge. Let's look at some of the results from the last six years. The ImageNet challenge is probably the most prestigious and famous uh, benchmark in computer vision. Basically, each team gets 1.2 million images to train. Each image is one of a thousand categories. It can be cats, dogs, <coughs> there are 100 breeds of dogs and cats, a lot of insects and other objects. And you need to classify a, a new 150,000 images. Now you can see that there's a large leap between 2011 and 2012. So let's look what happened there. Uh, basically, until 2011, 2010 and 11, uh, all the approaches uses, uh, used uh, like old machine learning stuff related to uh, filters and stuff like that. Not, not very interesting. What happened in 2012, which, um, which enabled this big leap, is that uh, the supervision team by Alex Krushevsky uh, were the first one to actually use uh, deep learning for this task. And you can see this amazing leap. Uh, the second place in, in the 2012 only reached, uh, this is 83.6, second place only reached 75% uh, accuracy. So they really smashed the competition. And what happened uh, the year after about 50% of the, of the teams used uh, deep learning, and the year after, all, uh, all the teams used deep learning. Uh, this year, Microsoft won, and last year, Google won. So, uh, I, I just want to emphasize a bit, this was like, 2012 was like the revolution. Everything changed, and this, the, the, um, the field of computer vision was start, starting to lean towards, uh, more towards uh, deep learning. So, yeah, uh, sorry. So like I said, only in recent years it was made feasible. It, it's, it, it has reasons why it only happened in 2012 and not uh, in the 80s or 90s uh, as in the earlier book. Uh, so first this is due to large image sets. Uh, to train deep learning networks, you need a lot of images. Now all data sets such as uh, written here like labeled faces in the wild only had about uh, uh, tens of thousands of images. Uh, Facebook, at 2014, they released the deep face network, which really uh, smashed this, the previous state of the art to the ground. Uh, there was a big hype uh, on it, and they used 4.4 million images to train. Uh, the following year, Google used 260 million images to train. So you really need, uh, you really need a a lot of images, and by the way, those face recognition models by Facebook and Google are uh, almost as good as humans at uh, identifying uh, faces. They're also almost good as, as humans at uh, face recognition challenges. Uh, also, uh, GPUs came around. Uh, GPUs made, made the training of networks about tw 10 to 20 times uh, faster, <coughs> and there were also some algorithmic which I don't want to go into details now, but they're written here. If anyone any questions after, I'll be glad to answer. Okay. <laughs> this is a nice quote by Jan Le Kuhn, which I already mentioned. So today, deep learning is easy. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of open source packages. We'll talk specifically on CAFE. Um, so you can just choose your weapon, get a GPU, or use uh, Amazon, or a uh, or IBM uh, as, a, as a cloud service and train your networks. Like I just said that uh, four or three years ago, there were none of these, uh, except Cafe and Tiano, all the other packages were not available. They're only very, very recent and very, very easy to learn. Okay, now the fun part. How to deep learning. Okay, there are the main building blocks. 
First, you need data. The more, the better. Then, you need to define the architecture of the, the network. Basically, just a simple sequence of layers. Uh, you need to define what you're trying to accomplish, what the net needs to learn, like what is the error function. Uh, and now we'll discuss each one. Data. Okay, so how much? It depends. If you're trying to cope with real-world images, the kind that you will find on Facebook, and stuff like that, you'll need probably at least uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Don't have a lot of data, don't worry. You can take a, a network that somebody else trained and apply it on your, uh, your data. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but the bottom line, really, the more data you have, the better the results will be. Uh, last week I was in a conference in Lake Placid, and a friend of mine, which uh, runs on, uh, he, he researched face recognition. He, he suddenly, uh, an, another new benchmark became available. He'll use another 2.6 million images. The results uh, went dramatically up. Okay, so architecture. What exactly the net looks like? Um, this is an example of a net for gender recognition. Uh, so basically, uh, like I said earlier, uh, a deep network is simply a sequence of layer. Each one is applied to the output of the previous one. Now, the main building block is the convolution in there, the holy grail. It contains the filters. It does most of the work. Um, what, what the convolution layer does, actually, it applies its filters. It learns its filters in the training set. Uh, and it produces an activation map for each filter. If you have a second filter, it stacks up. You get two activation maps, uh, possibly more. Then, uh, the, the, uh, another common uh, type of layer is the pooling layer. It basically just subsamples uh, the outputs. Uh, here you can see an example of max pooling. It just takes uh, each square of two by two and takes the max element of a uh, max value of each uh, such square. Uh, now the final layers are usually fully connected layers. They are layers where each neuron is connected to each neuron. So if I'll come back to this example, it's really it's a bit hard to see. Okay, so here you have, here you get the data, you have a convolutional layer, you get convolutional outputs. It goes through a, a pooling layer, pooling outputs, a normal, normalization layer, and then another conv layer, another pooling layer, and so on and so on, until they're fully connected down the end of the path. Uh, this is the exact framework for uh, the age of gender, a network that I showed in the demo. So really it's not, not very complicated. Well, it depends. Uh, yeah. Okay, last function. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, when you train a network, you need to, to tell it what is, what, what is the error you are trying to minimize. Like, how, how do you penalize uh, it, uh, its outputs? So, uh, there Commonly, two types of uh, problems in machine learning there are regression problems and classification problems. In regression problems, you're trying to estimate a real value number, like the height of the uh, population. Like, uh, I take all, all the images of you guys and try to, to uh, train a network to estimate height. So this is a real value number, and usually use a, a sum of square loss. In classification, uh, is more close to what I'm doing. Uh, you try to classify male, male, female, uh, which animal, like you give an, an, uh, an image, try to say if it's a dog, cat, a moose, or Donald Trump. Uh, the image challenge, which, we, um, which I uh, told about earlier. So the loss function, this ugly thing, uh, which is it's only good for theoretical aspects. You don't, when you go ahead and, and implement, you don't need to dwell on these things. So, turns out I have time, uh, so we can do some coding, actually. Um, good. So let's start, take, for example, uh, the audience faces benchmark, um, which is the benchmark used for age and gender. And let's 
look at some faces. So those are the images, and just a quick uh, guide on how to uh, train networks in Cafe. So first of all, you would need to define a, just a second. You would need to write uh, the list of images with its with uh, the label each image in that form. This is basically just a path to each image with the label. Okay, uh, each, each number here on the right column um, is the age category from either uh, 0 to 2, 2 to 6, 8 to 12, etc. Next, you... Sorry... You define the network. Again, this is the network that I told about earlier. So you can see here the convolutional layer, um, the number of uh, filters, uh, etc. Um, here's the definition of the pooling layer with the kernel size and the stride. How many the kernel size? How many uh, pixels to take the max of stride? how much to jump from window to window. Can you zoom in? Um, I hope. It's, it's Vim, so uh, ah. it's less, so I, okay. I'm not sure if I can. Sorry. But all, all of this is available, actually. It's public available, and you can just download it. And that pooling layer and fully connected layer. And you define the solver. Uh, which contains just a bunch of hyperparameters, and you go ahead and train using this simple command. Uh, so, like I said, uh, it's easy. It well, I went over it very, very fast. But all this is publicly available. There are a lot of of examples and documentations. So. So, um, CAFE just minimizes the function for you? For CAFE, you define a, a, the architecture of the net, you give it data, and it will minimize the log functions that you give it. Could you control how it does it? Or? Okay, so there are a number of common uh, minimization tools that it uses. Uh, commonly, it's stochastic gradient descent. Uh, you can, which is really the, the common usage, don't need something. If you wanted to, to uh, train faster, you can use other grad or other delta. So yeah, you control it. And also in any other reasonable package, such as Torch. Okay, what uh, grade the algorithm gets from the training set? What is the like, oh, okay. average uh, error? Or okay, so uh, I hope I have logs here. No, I don't. Uh, Okay, so um, what what score does it get? Like, what what is the score on training? Training set. Okay, uh, my algorithm or the generally? Here, for example, the one that you. Okay, the so ages. so here uh, on age classification, my algorithm gets roughly uh, fifty percent. There are eight age categories. So for uh, exact matching. Exact match, yeah. Yeah, it's not. What is the standard deviation? Okay, so uh, there are seven age categories, so a random guess would give you a 14%. Okay, so my algorithm, if I recall correctly, gives about 50%. And it's not, it's not, like, uh, it's not a very good algorithm. I don't mind saying, saying it, though it's mine. Um, the network that I trained is very shallow, it doesn't use a lot of data. You can do a lot to improve it. It only has three convolutional networks, so it's very shallow, actually. And I specifically did it because I'm not using any outside data, and I only have about fifteen or seventeen thousand mm -hmm. images. 
you can get a yeah, far better good. results if you use a uh, pre-trained uh, network and find you it on, uh, on this uh, benchmark. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. I was under the impression that Indians say do you are identizing? Yeah. Wait, is this the face recognition, gender recognition somehow related to what you do or is it just a it does. <laughs> it does relate to what we do. Uh, this project is, uh, this specific project isn't related to audience. The audience faces is a public benchmark for age and gender classification that audience published. Uh, and yes, it does relate. We do apply uh, models for uh, age and gender classifications. Uh, it helps us to target users. You, you said that uh, deep learning is mostly uh, mostly used for uh, for image processing, NLP, and, uh, and voice recognition. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about other applications? Uh, actually, I'm not familiar with other applications. I know that like, you can take the general, the general data and apply it to deep learning. It won't work better than other uh, common algorithms for machine learning. Like on general data that is not a, a natural signal. Deep learning works best on natural signals such as images and voice, uh, or text. Well, if you have a lot of data, it can sort of like act like a natural signal. But like on general categorical data, it doesn't uh, perform better than random forest, for example. Okay, so we're almost done. Sorry about that. That's because I have Ubuntu and OpenOffice sucks. <laughs> okay. So almost done. Yeah, we did some coding. Okay, some more tips and tricks. Uh, really, just two more minutes of your time. Uh, Fine tune. What if I don't have millions of images? Uh, mostly, like, you gathered, a lot of times you gather data yourself. And out of, uh, a lot of benchmarks are not publicly available for you to use. So, uh, or you have a very specific task, for example, emotion recognition or stuff like that. You don't have millions of images. So what can you do? You take a strong pre-trained network. Those are very easy to find. Uh, you take uh, the network as itself, as a whole, and you train it uh, for a few more epochs uh, on uh, your data. That it dramatically improves performance. It does magic, really. It, uh, it, so, this is something that's very nice. Like a few years ago, a lot of, of deep learning networks were not available. But today, if you're into general image classification, take any network that train on the ImageNet uh, challenge. If you're into more uh, biometric application, you can take the uh, VGG face network uh, for face recognition and, and fine tune it on your application. Another cool trick, that augmentation. Uh, when training, I can add r random uh, image transformation to the image, and so I, I artificially increase the, the volume of the training data. So if I have this uh, lovely uh, child here, uh, by random flips and rotations, I can get 10 times more data. And it does improve uh, training, you see it's not the exact image, so it doesn't contain a lot of new information, but it does contain uh, enough uh, new information for, uh, for the net to actually learn from uh, those uh, augmentations. Uh, some links I've added here. Uh, this, this slide is going to be uh, public, so you can use it from there. And that's it. Uh, you can check out my blog, the TLCV blog. And I'll make sure that all the material here will be, will be public. <laughs>